This here is the Banya Banya Nut. And the Banya Banya Nut, besides being a fun thing to say, is uh, from a very, very important tree. The tree that this comes from is part of the Oricaria genus, which I'm sure I'm saying wrong. Oricarias, well, first of all, they are impressive looking. They are really, really big. They produce these gigantic freaking pine cone looking things. And this comes from there. The closest relative that we have to this that you'd find at like a grocery store is actually a pine nut. The fact that Oricaria cones look like something that a dinosaur would eat is not a coincidence. These trees, this, this genus of trees, has been around a really, really long time. And there are records of these existing as far back as the Jurassic period. So it's pretty likely that dinosaurs did actually eat these. And some people even think that sauropods evolved their long necks so they can reach the cones of the Oricaria trees. There are several different species of Oricarias out there, however, they are very isolated. They're mostly in New Caledonia. everybody so I'm with uh, Steven here we are walking just on the side of the road that is an Ericaria there's like a ton of them in New Caledonia there's like do you know how many species there are Steven like 30 30 species this is an island that broke off during the Jurassic period it's one of the, the longest isolated islands in the world it's 500 miles long 80 miles wide tons and tons of endemic species and they're all very hard to find but I just like to point out that these very, very rare trees that only grow in New Caledonia are just growing on the side of the road. Shell station, and it's like just right here. And you see them in people's yards. So it's kind of amazing. Like right now, I there's no nuts on this one. It's not the right season, but I am touching something that only exists here. So, so this is a Gondwanan group of species. There's one in, a couple in Australia, a couple species in um, South America, but the majority of species and diversity only exist on this island. Yeah, because this is a landmass that broke off, these evolve separately. So the ones that are in Australia are, are related to this, but this is like, a throwback to the plants that used to be around when dinosaurs were around. Oh yeah. This is what they would have looked like. This is what dinosaurs were eating, were the nuts that came from this from this tree. Yeah. Which is insane. And yeah. so insane. And I don't feel like anyone actually knows that here. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in a, a, a French territory, and if you go to like the supermarket, everything is imported. Everything is coming in from Europe. Like, the majority of things. I mean, Stephen found a breadfruit. You know, like we can find a few things grown here, but the majority of things are shipped in and really, really expensive. Really expensive. However, if you look closely, if you got the right eye for it, New Caledonia is got, it has just a wealth of like amazing plants. Oh yeah. But you gotta keep an eye out at your local gas station or in somebody's yard. It might be growing in your backyard if you live here and you don't even realize that this is something really, really special. However, the Bunya Bunya comes from Australia. In the past, I reviewed something called the Monkey Puzzle Tree. That is also an Oricaria, and that one grows in South America. I'm going to try this in a second, and I also have a whole handful of them, so I'm gonna make something out of them too. But before I do that, I wanna give a big shout out to Brian for sending this to me. Brian actually has a website where he sells seeds to a bunch of really interesting plants, including the Banya Banya. So go to raindanceseeds.com if you grow plants and are interested in growing this too. 
These can be eaten in a variety of different ways, but usually they are cooked. I believe you can eat them raw, but uh, usually they are cooked. And if I'm going to get into this, I have a problem because it's really, really hard. It's got a hard shell on it. So uh, I've seen people cut into these with like wire cutters or like metal cutters. I don't have that. I've got a knife. Let's see if I can get in here somehow. Looks kind of like a big peanut. <laughs> It's somewhere between a raw peanut, a raw potato, and a raw chestnut. It's a little bit starchy, a little bit nutty, earthy, but still sweet. It's, it's good. It's definitely good, but uh, because of that starchiness, you definitely would want to cook this, similar to like how you'd want to cook a potato. How this is used right now is kind of interesting because this is getting a little bit of a resurgence in Australia. So let's give you a little bit of history about this, okay? These trees are hugely important to the Aboriginal people in Australia, and they have been historically very, very important. Ownership of the Bunya Bunya trees would pass down generation to generation. The Bunya Bunya trees do not produce nuts like all the time. I believe it is like, once every few years. And whenever there would be a harvest of these nuts, Aboriginal people would have a huge festival. Different tribes from all around the country would gather, share the nuts with each other, have a huge feast, and this also would be an occasion for, you know, settling differences, working out different arrangements among different tribes. These festivals were incredibly important to the Aboriginal people, and uh, tragically, when the colonists came in, they forced them to stop. They cut down a bunch of the Banya Banya trees, and it's all very dark history for the Aboriginal people. In more recent times, though, these festivals have come back. So you can go to a Banya Banya nut festival in Australia, and because of the attention that has come to these nuts, it's become kind of a hip culinary ingredient that people use, which I think is great. So people are using these to make pesto, people are roasting them, they are putting them in desserts. They're using these in a lot of different ways. So I thought it'd be fun to make something with these that is uh, more of like a modern, trendy sort of thing that people are doing. And one of the big things people are doing is they're using this to make hummus. So uh, let's give it a shot. In order to cook these, I think it's a good idea to pierce them first. And I tried to do that with this knife here and nearly lost a finger. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, <laughs> but I had an idea. I've got some tin snips. I'm going to try that. It doesn't need to be perfect. You just want to crack these a little bit so it cooks. So I let these cook for about 30 minutes in slightly salted water. And that water has now turned a bright red, which according to the internet, makes a flavorsome tea. So, uh, sure, let's, let's try that first. I mean, it kind of looks like tea, but uh, I don't think it's going to taste like tea. I did salt that water, too, so... It's not bad. It tastes kind of like salty potato water, but it's not bad. I would use this in a soup, and it would make sense for this to be more of like what Aboriginal people would use. I'm sure there's some nutrition floating around in there, you know, so it'd be kind of wasteful to go through all this trouble and just throw out that water. So yeah, drinking it uh, makes sense. For me, throwing it in a soup makes even more sense. These have softened considerably, so I don't think I'm gonna lose a finger if I remove these shells. Tastes like chestnut, but the um, texture on it is different. The texture on that is really, really, really dense. Dense and kind of pasty. There's a little bit of a beaniness to it, a nuttiness, and earthiness, a little bit of potato taste, 
a little peanutty, but you know, those are flavors that you can get from a chestnut also. So I'd say overall, this tastes like a nice boiled chestnut sort of taste. I still think it'll be good for hummus though. So let's do it. Uh, so these bunion nuts are reacting kind of oddly to being blended. They're turning into like this doughy kind of paste rather than, you know, a creamy hummus. So to fix that, uh, I'm going to try adding more water to it. And to give a little bit more flavor, I'm going to try using this bunya tea here. So just put in couple splashes of that. Eh. It tastes good boiled. I would boil these, put some salt on it, be totally happy. I'm sure roasting these also would be really good. Hummus, though, the texture of that is gooey, goopy, gummy, slimy. Doesn't work. Maybe there's a way of preparing this so it doesn't get like that, but it's, it's a dense, slightly waxy, sticky kind of nut. So I don't think you're gonna get the kind of texture that you want from a hummus. And it's also a little bit sweet. Sugar and garlic, like I don't, they don't really go super well. Don't get me wrong though, bunya nuts are delicious. They're really, really good, just not like that. So uh, I think that's about it. Thank you so much everyone for watching. Thanks again to raindanceseeds.com for sending me these and uh, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. I would like to give a very big shout out to Smarter Every Day and JMac. They are mega patrons over on my Patreon page, which I've linked in the description below. If you are not familiar with Patreon, this is a way that you can support creators like me and get some really cool bonuses in return, like exclusive content, early access. There's even one where I will send you cool stuff in the mail. You gotta check it out, and that is linked below. If you don't want to go on Patreon, another way you can support the channel is by getting a t-shirt, like the one that I'm wearing right now. This is the Durian Anatomy shirt, which is available in the description below. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.